I remember watching It's a Wonderful Life as a kid every few years, but it didn't seem to leave that big of an impact on me back then. But this past Christmas, I watched it for the first time as an adult, and my appreciation for it grew exponentially. In fact, it is not only one of my favorite Christmas movies now, it is one of my favorite movies in general, and I really needed to make a video talking about it in some facet, and there was one question that repeated in my mind during my different viewings over the past couple of months. But first, let's talk about how It's a Wonderful Life came into being in the first place. The concept for It's a Wonderful Life was born from a little short story called The Greatest Gift by Philip Van Dornstern, say that five times fast, which was loosely based on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And we can definitely see similar elements between these two stories. For one thing, Henry Potter is essentially the Scrooge of Bedford Falls, and fittingly enough, Lionel Barrymore, who played Henry Potter, even played Scrooge for 12 plus years on the radio, so he definitely had that old miser thing down pat. And George is visited by a ghost on Christmas Eve, who somewhat takes him through his life. Well, who are you then? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody. AS2, what, what, what's that? AS2. Angel, second class. So now that we have the Christmas Carol similarities out of the way, Let's get to the point of this video. What's that book you've got there? Oh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Oh, Tom Sawyer's drying out too. You should read the new book Mark Twain's writing now. Why is Clarence reading The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? He mentions it at the beginning of the movie, then again when we first meet him, and he leaves it with George at the end of the movie. Now, it's possible that this was an arbitrary choice, and I don't know if Frank Capra ever said one way or another. On the surface, the two stories don't look too much the same at all. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer is mostly an episodic, light-hearted, satirical tale of childhood and the hypocrisy of adults, whereas It's a Wonderful Life is a story with a darker tone about a man that thinks about throwing his life away. Tom Sawyer's selfishness is more focused on while George Bailey's selflessness shines. Tom's childish escapades and George's adult working life couldn't be more different. But as I reread Tom Sawyer this month, there were some strikingly similar themes, characters, and developments that made me think it wasn't all that random of a choice. For starters, there is a character with the last name of Potter in both stories that is important to the development of both main characters. Henry Potter is the antagonist of It's a Wonderful Life, trying to create one town under Potter, but is continually being pushed back by George and his selflessness. Muff Potter is the town drunk that has been accused of murder, and Tom knows he's innocent but is too scared to come forward. Even more interestingly, in Chapter 8, Tom thinks briefly about what it would be like to die temporarily. It seemed to him that life was but a trouble at best, and he more than half envied Jimmy Hodges, so lately released. It must be very peaceful, he thought, to lie and slumber and dream forever and ever, with the wind whispering through the trees and caressing the grass and the flowers over the grave, and nothing to bother and grieve about ever anymore. Ah, if he could only die temporarily. And in chapter 14, after Tom and his friends ran away, they discover that everyone in their community thinks they drowned and are mourning them, and Tom gets a chance to witness his own funeral. Boys, I know who's drowned. It's us. They felt like heroes in an instant. Here was a gorgeous triumph. They were missed. They were mourned. Hearts were breaking on their account. Tears were being shed. Accusing memories of unkindness to these poor lost lads were rising up, and unavailing regrets and remorse were being indulged. And best of all, the departed were the talk of the whole town and the envy of all the boys, as far as this dazzling notoriety was concerned. This was fine. Sounds vaguely like what Clarence put George through when he granted his wish of never being born. And when we look at Tom through this lens, his character and development become a lot more aligned with George. Both characters come from small towns, too small for them, and their big dreams of adventures and making names for themselves. He would be a pirate. That was it. Now his future lay plain before him, and glowing with unimaginable splendor. How his name would fill the world and make people shudder. I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Then I'm coming back here and go to college to see what they know, and then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields, I'm going to build skyscrapers a hundred stories high. They both isolate themselves from their community in different ways, 
only to learn that when they remove themselves completely, that they left a bigger impact than they realize, and both end their stories with a stronger bond to their community that they've always been a part of.